People are coming in. Okay. We're gonna mute ourselves in case our dog barks. We're up to 28 people have joined so far. All right, we'll give it like two more minutes and I'll get started. All right. Okay. Let's go. All right, we'll give it dos minutos más, que hay como 33 y se juntaron como 44. Y empiezo a las 6 y 6. Tenemos colegas, estudiantes del pasado, estudiantes del presente, familia, un grupo bien bonito. Bien. Ya casi. Muy bien. Hola, hola y bienvenidos. Welcome to Bomba Breaking Barriers with Music and Dance. This special webinar live event is brought to you by the College of Humanities and Arts and the Department of World Languages and Literatures at San Jose State University. Um, today's webinar is a collaboration between myself, uh, Vanessa Marie Fernandez, and my colleagues, uh, Ruby Ramirez and Avicia Long. Uh, we've been working on this project for over a year. It's part of the College of Humanities and Arts Borderlands series, which has had events all year. Originally, our event was going to be in person, but here we are, um, able to welcome a broader audience from Stanford, UCSC, San Jose State, Puerto Rico, people from everywhere have joined us today. It's so exciting. And just to give you a little overview of Borderlands and the series sponsored by Dean Shannon Miller and um, a great support to the program has been uh, Professor Catherine Harris. Um, Borderlands, the theme is building bridges, uh, br blurring boundaries, building, breaking barriers, and building bridges. 
And together, Professor Long, Professor Ramirez, and I did a sub project called Decolonizing Borderlands. So we were looking at the idea of empire and how it creates borders. But our goal is to see those borders and find ways of breaking through them, transcending them, understanding them so that we can overcome them. Bomba is an excellent example of blurring boundaries, breaking borders, and building bridges, and decolonizing borderlands. So these are our themes, and um, I don't want to say much more because our esteemed guests are going to give wonderful explanations and the best part, live examples of how Bomba through music, dance, song, movement is a dialogue, it's a collaboration just as a form, and it came from um, resistance to slavery, but it's something that is very much alive and useful today. And it can transcend, you know, borders right now as we reach you live via Zoom. Um, and I think that's about it. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Denise Solis and Julia Caridad Cepeda, um, who are directors, founders, teachers, instructors um, of Taller Bombalele based in Alameda. Um, it's Northern California, close to San Francisco, for those of you that don't know. Um, but it's a huge bridge because it bridges Bomba in Puerto Rico from the famous, very well-known Familia Cepeda that has a long, long legacy of Bomba. Um, and we have uh, their very own Julia Cepeda, who is going to talk to you about that beautiful legacy. So here we are. I am, um, oh. Just a few technicalities. We can't hear you. <laughs> So if you have questions, please go to the Q&A session um, of your Zoom screen and please type questions. I will be keeping track of all the questions and we will have question and answer sessions throughout the presentation. The presentation today is gonna consist of some speaking. Um, Julia and Denise will talk to you about Bomba and Bomba Lele. They're also gonna perform and they're also gonna teach you. Um, we're also going to show some video clips and we're going to have question and answer sessions. So that's pretty much the structure of our webinar today. Um, please start uh, including your questions in the Q&A session. And when we have those moments, I will read out the questions and they will answer. And another uh, question we have for you, and please type either in the chat or in the Q&A section, um, if anybody here does not understand Spanish because the presentation can be pretty bilingual we can translate um, but to be sure if everybody understands Spanish then we'd rather just go back and forth without translating um, so just let us know we can accommodate anything uh, ho however we will be primarily conducting this in English as um, advertised and without further ado um, here we go. I, let me pull up the slides. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Denise Solis, and I am uh, Afro-Mexicana, uh, born in the United States, first generation. Um, and I'm pleased to be here with my partner in life and crime in Bomba, Julia. Buenas tardes a todos, bienvenidos. Estamos muy felices de compartir con ustedes. Mi nombre es Julia Cepeda. Eh, soy parte de la familia Cepeda, una familia que lleva siete generaciones ininterrumpidas, manteniendo la bomba eh, como parte de, de, nuestra, de nuestro diario vivir. Julia Cepeda, her, she's part of the Cepeda family. They've been pra practicing, living, uh, promoting, teaching, uh, breathing, bomba uh, as part of their daily life, resisting uh, for now seven generations and counting continuously without interruption. So um, we're going to start today with a song. Uh, we like to open up uh, the space. Uh, in bomba, we call the space where a dancer enters to have a conversation with the drummers and which who's inspired by the music, the singing, uh, the vibration 
vibrations of the drum, it's called el batey, B-A-T-E-Y. And the batey is an indigenous Taino word. And that is where um, people have that, dis and, um, that, you know, you tell your story as a dancer, you communicate with the drummer and you cut through space and time. That's how we, how we, um, how we feel it. Um, so we're gonna sing, Forgive us on the, you know, on the Zoom, it's, it's a little limited. It doesn't always pick up the drums. So we're gonna try to be creative in how we try to convey across to you uh, Bomba and we'll do some videos, but we wanted to start with a song. And um, Vanessa, if you could share please the, the second slide. I think it's, it's got the coro on there. Um, this song is in Creole. It was written by Julia's grandfather, Rafael Cepeda Tiles. We'll talk a little bit more about him in a little bit. Um, and the song is called Mi Serere Congo Mi Sie. And it's a song he wrote in honor of that longing for home for folks who were brought against their will and bondage. Um, and it's referring to the Congo spirits uh, that they left behind and how they lamented and they were um, saying where are where's my spirit where's my spiritualness um we're lost and so um sing with us the coro goes like this mi serere congo mi sie donde ta mi congolare and it's written on the screen so um mi serere congo mi sie donde esta mi congolare so hope you can join us, sing with us. Uh, this is call and response. So I will be the main singer and Julia's gonna respond with coro. So if you wanna join us, clap, move your body. This is music to be felt. Uh, even through the technical um, remote, working from home, studying from home, we hope you feel the vibrations, even if they're just like spiritual. Um, all right, Julia, we're ready. Mi serere congo mi sie, donde ta mi congolare, que donde ta mi congolare, donde ta mi congolare, mi serere congo mi sie. to hear it um could everybody could somebody write in because we can't see you or hear you um and let us know if you heard um i'm getting some feedback that people aren't oh great they did hear okay. great all right good and when we <laughs> okay well, when we gonna... show the slides are you guys able to see the slides no, we're not able to see them um neither my yeah people have been writing me that they can't see the slides oh goodness So, do you want me to try sharing the screen? Okay, I need to, I'm going to, hold on. I had to make you co-host again. 
share the screen now? Yes. Okay, let's give this a try. Is the this one? Can folks see that? Can you guys see the slides now? Yes. Uh, thank you so much. Wonderful. So, okay, you you ladies are going to have to do the slides. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Um, great. All right. Well, here we go. So that was that was the first slide that we we were we missed, but there it is. Miserere, Congo, Misie, donde esta mi Congo lare? We're gonna now move it along to our next slide. Um, There we go. So I want to pass on the mic to Julia. Um, keep, uh, I'll, I'll make sure to keep in mind that um, we'll, we'll do as much translating. We code switch back and forth. But um, there was a handout, an overview of Bomba that will be accessible to folks. Some of you got it beforehand. Some of you might get it after. That goes a little deeper into Bomba. Um, we'll, we're going to talk around about it. Um, so Julia, uh, what does Bomba mean to you? What is Bomba? Uh, pues la bomba es eh, la tradición de música y baile eh, que nace de la alianza entre taínos y africanos. Eh, también tiene eh, una fuerza, una, para, para mí particularmente como puertorriqueña, eh, tiene un, sus raíces muy profundas porque fue el mecanismo de lucha contra el abuso inhumano eh, en contra del pueblo negro indígena. Entonces eso es, eso es algo que todavía eh, está con nosotros como, como parte de nuestra historia. So, you know, Bomba, a lot of folks be, are, you know, trying to really establish the history of Bomba in terms of placing it in a date. And Bomba as um, being music that was born out of an, an alliance and a tra it tra it's a tradition more of like a way of life uh, born out of this alliance of the Tainos in Puerto Rico and Africans that were brought in bondage against their will uh, because of colonization and slavery. Um, the earliest accounts that we've been able to understand from folks that spend have you know been uh, researching this is that there's reference to Bomba as early as the late 1600s uh, because of a, 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 a man, uh, Miguel Porcico de Con, he did a, he did a, a, a general, a, a journal, a memoir of seeing Bomba in the town of San Juan in the late 1600s um, where uh, folks were dancing, Africans were dancing in a, in, a, in a celebration of Corpus Christi. So this was based in a Catholic celebration. And so um, I think what's important that we want to really convey about the tradition of Bomba is how the roots are, even though Bomba was practiced on sugarcane plantations where enslaved peoples were, were forced to work, um, in both Taino and Africans, um, it, it was really born in the context of those Tainos and freed Africans who were who were um, either cimarrones or were brought to quote unquote um, teach the newly arrived folks how to how to be enslaved, right? And so um, this led to rebellions in sugarcane plantations and to really a, a bond that was formed that created. Um, breaking through barriers. And when we say that, it was like you, you had Tainos and folks from different um, areas of Africa who didn't speak the same language, who, who had um, different maybe ways of being, of, of holding spirit and, and of uh, different ways they worshiped, but somehow they were able to come together and form this, this bond through the music and the dance uh, that, they, that they formed called Bomba. And so right now, as uh, the younger generations uh, are learning more about Bomba, um, some conditions haven't changed, right? Capitalism is very much alive and the way that it manifests itself around you know what it colonizes the borders and uh, that are created both geographical uh, the borders that are also um, created that are um, you know 
how we define ourselves, the languages we speak, how we identify ourselves, uh, what color of skin our skin is, uh, they all still exist, even if they're subliminal, they're very much alive. And so I think Bomba offers us the opportunity to transcend those. Uh, as someone of Mexican American descent, I have been adopted by the Puerto Rican cultural community and um, have, have really experienced what it, what it means to have the spirit awaken. Um, and when you come into that bate with those drums, you really feel what that what that what that is. You really feel empowered. Um, Julia, can you talk a little bit about uh, this? There's a quote at the bottom of this slide that I think really speaks to how we are learning, which is through family lineage uh, for La Familia Cepeda. Uh, and the the slide is um, says it in Spanish at the bottom. Cuando Puerto Rico comprenda el valor de su folklore, luchará con mucha fuerza para defender su honor. When Puerto Ricans um, understand the value of their folklore of their tradition, they're, they will fight with so much force to defend its honor. Uh, that was Julia's grandfather. So if we could go to the next slide, we wanna kind of do a little shift from um, the birth of Bomba and its historical context. And uh, I wanna ask Julia a couple of questions about <laughs> her kind of uh, experience being born into this tradition and what does it mean to live Bomba in, in the Familia Cepeda? So, oh, I'm doing the slide, so here we go. Bomba is communal practice. So, Julia, ¿qué me puedes decir? And I will translate for you, or you can also say it in English. Um, these are some little um, things to remind us what Bomba is. Um, so, how do you... Um, How do you live bomba? Para nosotros en la en nuestra familia ha sido eh, el tambor eh, ha sido el instrumento más importante eh, porque se ha mantenido no solamente por los siete generaciones sino lo que nos ha enseñado nuestro abuelo y familia eh, es ese trabajo social comunitario que la bomba primero es, se hace es, es parte de una dinámica no la podemos hacer solo. Este, y, y para nosotros como familia, eh, mantener la tradición es algo excepcional porque eh, lo hacemos con un approach colectivo, con un approach comunitario. So for Julia, Bomba since uh, birth, right, has been something that her family has done um, because it, it's just part of their daily life. Um, her grandparents um, taught them also how bomba is practiced in a way that is part of being part of a community, uh, that is also what is your social activism in that community. Um, we learn about the songs, about the stories they tell through oral tradition. Uh, unfortunately in bomba, because it was considered black folk music, uh, just like in many other places in the world, it, it was. It, this is not something that was Um, generally documented, do documented. Um, and so because of family lineage is the way we have been able to understand and the way it's been preserved um, and Julia says this is a collective approach so uh, you need a collective to do bomba Julia and I just sang a song but you'll see in a couple of videos right now how you need you need a village you you know if you're <laughs> one person and you want to do bomba right now our community is suffering because zoom doesn't quite get us there uh, and we're like oh my god how do we do bomba when we're all in different places and we're trying to like connect remotely um, and in a capitalist world where exceptional individualism is is valued where people um, have a better relationship with our iPhones than we do with the people next door um, Bomba really focuses on the collective versus exceptional individuals um, storytelling uh, how we listen how, how how were you taught uh, in in Bomba Julia were you just like I'm gonna get a skirt and dance como como a ti te enseñaron que fue la manera en que tú llegas a a tener esa conversación y esa dinámica. Bueno, nosotros hemos creado lo que se llama el método Cepeda y lo hacemos a través de observar. Lo hicimos a través de esos pasos porque queremos, eh, rápido llegamos a un sitio y queremos ponernos la falda y practicar, pero yo creo que lo importante, eh, observar es, es, es parte del aprendizaje. Lo analizamos y luego internalizamos. Um, repetimos e internalizamos. Entonces, eso es parte del método que se ha creado la familia. Uh -huh. 
Kolya's family, they've de developed a method that was kind of just innate to how they were taught by their elders, which is you observe first what is happening, what is going on. It's, it's collective, it's listening, being aware of the whole versus like, I want to jump in and do this. Um, repeating what you see in, 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 in event, analyzing it, observing, analyzing it, repeating it then, and then eventually you internalize it and then you you become part of that collective. Um, one important thing is no one's left behind. So I know when we practice bomba, it's it's bomba is to be enjoyed by everyone. It's not so much a performance, although there are elements of you know we get invited to do a performance, we'll come and do bomba because we want to share it. But where we enjoy it most is on the side of the street and getting everyone involved or in a cafe where it's accessible to everyone and you, you're, you're there you're participating, you're gonna sing coro, we'll teach it to you, you're gonna hum, you're gonna move your body, you're doing bomba with us. Y hablando sobre barrera, yo creo que eso es importante, un punto que acabas de traer, que hoy día uh, la bomba ha sobrepasado fronteras, en ese sentido, y hoy día se hace, como tú dices, en los cafetines, en la esquina, pero en un momento dado era música de negros, de barrio, que solamente se, se, se entendían para un sector, Julia said, you know, one important thing is Bomba through the generations has crossed borders um, in many different ways or has transcended. This is music that was that was that happened uh, post-colonial times in neighborhoods, in black neighborhoods, uh, in, in their homes, uh, a way to worship, to celebrate in your home, in your garage, in your front yard. Uh, and now there's Bomba in Japan. There's Bomba all over the diaspora uh, um, in the United States and in Puerto Rico. You can go and pretty much any day of the week you can find bomba happening somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a, that's a beautiful thing. I'm gonna keep us moving so we keep the conversation going. We wanna have, make sure we have time for um, um, question and answer after this section and I'm keeping aware of our time because we've got a very tight agenda. So um, La Familia Cepeda, like we said, there's a little bit more history on this slide um, in terms of Don Rafael Cepeda and Doña Caridad Cepeda really are the, the, the rocks of, of the foundation of, uh, of this tradition uh, in more modern times, although both of them came from Bomba lineage. So the Familia Cepeda lineage goes back to Don Rafael Cepeda's great, great grandfather. Uh, but Don Rafael Cepeda has been someone who has been recognized as a, a folklorist. He was given an NEA grant as um, a master folklorist, master artist in the 80s by the National Endowment for the Arts. Uh, he was, uh, he, him and Roberto Clemente are the only two Afro-Puerto Ricans who have been featured on a U.S. stamp um, because of the contributions that he made as not only a folklorist and someone who journaled and uh, is the reason why so many bomba songs like the one we sang earlier have survived was because he composed many bomba songs but he also journaled what he saw and so there was there are huge gaps in terms of what we know about bomba historically because bomberos and bomberas died off and necessarily their the next generations didn't pick up the tradition and so because of La Familia Cepeda we've had a continual tradition uh, in San Mateo de Cangrejos, now known as Santurce, which is also important in Puerto Rico history because that was a free, uh, a town of, of freed uh, black folks. And uh, those um, free, uh, that free black community um, was the reason that um, the French didn't take over Puerto Rico. And so, um, you know, um, the Spanish owed, owed them quite a bit. And so San Mateo de Cangrejos was then um, renamed Santurce. Um, and so the, the bomba tradition that we have learned and that we um, teach is the bomba cangrejera. So Julia, um, explícanos un poco de la dinámica entre la bomba. What is that dynamic that happens in bomba? Pues como bien mencionaste ahorita, que es una tradición oral eh, dentro de los instrumentos, dice, ritmos básicos. Eh, en los instrumentos tenemos los, los buleadores, eh, la maraca, el cua, que son los dos palitos de madera. And we'll expand more on the instrumentation of bomba. Eh, y es muy importante el, el coro, el, el cantante, que anteriormente, um, principalmente eran mujeres las que cantaban y utilizaban la maraca um, y tenemos el primo subidor que es el instrumento que va a tener la conversación con el bailador o la bailadora de bomba. Ya, yeah, 
Yes, thank you, Julia. So we're gonna show a little bit. She, Julia talked about the dynamic, which is the instrumentation of bomba. We're gonna show a video, and these bear with us. These next couple of videos, we'll show um, small clips of them or snippets of them. It is Julia's family, so um, doing bomba in the neighborhood, and then at the last video and it's poor quality because these are from like the 60s and 70s um, is the, the, the family performing at, at the Lincoln 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 Center in Lincoln New Center. York. Mm -hmm. um, so um, we're going to play a little bit with the volume because since they're old recordings, they're they're not the best quality. But we wanted to kind of show Bomba in context of 60s and 70s in a family context. And then we're going to talk a little bit about how Bomba has um, evolved a bit and also what is the way in which Bomba transcends um, in many different forms, barriers, borders, uh, what have you. So here we go. Uh, let's, let's wish ourselves luck with this uh, video clip. And God bless you too. This is Julia's family. Doing Boma and their, her grandparents. The dynamic with the drummer and the dancer. That's her aunt. video of the family um, bomba in can you all see up my screen did I lose my screen Vanessa can you see my screen yes um, okay. just click back um, they they can't see me um, they can see you okay perfect Uh, here's another one. Uh, the the folks who were seen right, who we saw right there, the older couple, that's Julia's grandparents, um, Rafael and Caridad. Here's the next video. And this is this shows Don Rafael Cepeda teaching kids in the neighborhood. He's going to sing a gracia. One of her cousins. Seems a little harder to hear. Our 
are folks able to see that? Um, I did think the sound was a little off, but it's okay. See you. Okay. Oh, they say yes, they were able to see. Okay, good. Thank you. This next one is really poor quality. We apologize in advance. This is going to be the last video for, of, 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 of the older videos from La Familia Cepeda that we have, and then we'll, we'll go into a Q&A before we continue to the next part. So thank you for your patience with our te technical limitations here. This is at New York Lincoln Center in the late 60s, I believe. bringing out the elders, Rafael and Caridad Cepeda. Those are their children who brought them out. Their son just danced earlier. Let me show just a little more and then um I'm not getting good quality here. They're asking if we can share the videos later also so they can see them con calma. Right there is Julia's dad, Jesus Cepeda. switch to answer some questions. The dynamic that you see happening there is the dancer uh, speaks to the drummer uh, and the drummer, the lead drummer, it's called the subidor, their job is to interpret the dance movements in real time and it's an improvised uh, conversation. Um, the, the last song you saw was in the rhythm of Yuba and the Yuba rhythm is danced by the elders. So the, you saw the son open the space by dancing and then he brought out his parents, the elders, and they danced. When you saw the, 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 the grandfather, Rafael Cepeda, he's taking out money and he's putting it, he's giving it to the, to the drummers, he's, he's challenging them. And then the drummer comes out uh, of, of, from, from behind, from the side, and has a very in, intense conversation with the dancer. All right, so um, we're, before we go to the next section, we, we just wanted to give some context of uh, Bomba, um, 
its history, a little bit of the family lineage of uh, La Familia Cepeda in Bomba Cangrejera, and then we're gonna move on to Bomba today. Uh, but I uh, wanted to open it up for a couple of questions. Okay, I do have a few questions. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, so the uh, two are somewhat similar. Um, one question asks, how can someone new to Bomba do Bomba? And then there's another one that's related so that you can answer them together. How can you respectfully participate in Bomba music if you are not necessarily a part of the Puerto Rican community? Are, are there any spaces in the Bay Area where this actively takes place? And the last question is, are the skirts reflective of, it's about the skirts, about are the skirts reflective of African origin or French Spanish influence? So if you want to start with how somebody new can do bomba and then perhaps talk about the skirts. Sure. How, how can someone new do bomba, Julia? De la manera más fácil para ellos de opinar. Sí. Um, pues siempre lo, los, si, depende si están, yo, yo siempre los invito a que si están cerca de, del área donde hay algún tipo de taller, vayan aunque sea para observar. Eh, y puedan conocer un poco más la dinámica uh, en vivo y a todo color. Eh, y si no, también lo pueden empezar a ver como lo hacemos virtual, como esta oportunidad que han tenido también a través de vide videos de YouTube. Eh, eh, pero pero la, manera, la mejor manera de compartir y sentir esa vibración es uh, estando cerca de, de un batey donde, o de un bombazo eh, para que puedan sentir la vibración del tambor y ver la dinámica. Julia says, you know, um, the best way is, you know, to seek bomba if there, if it's local. There is bomba here locally. We'll talk a little bit about that in a second. Um, seek it out, observe, so that you can really grasp the dynamic of what's happening, uh, the interaction of the community that's participating. Um, there's also a lot online now. There's a lot of YouTube videos of bomba you could you could uh, you could uh, find. Uh, there's also a lot of folks teaching online, especially right now during the pandemic. There's a lot of Facebook Live. Uh, of bomba um, and but Julia says there's nothing like being there in person in a bate or bombazo seeing it first um, the family really teaches in that way like before you can walk a run you should walk right and so like observing it um, I'm of Mexican descent and I have been learning bomba since 2003 and I've never felt like I don't belong. Um, so um, we do teach classes here in the Bay Area in, at Rhythmics Cultural Works in Alameda. Uh, if invited, we'll go anywhere in the Bay Area, quite frankly. Um, we teach classes on Sundays at Rhythmics. Uh, you could look it up, Rhythmics Cultural Works. Uh, we're under the classes section. Uh, we have a website too tallerbombalele.com um, and you know it's uh, that we usually put stuff up there and we're super um, um, keep updated our Facebook. You know, we're, we're still not on the Instagram as well, as much, but uh, Taller Bomba Lele, Bomba Dance Classes on Facebook. Look us up, like us, and we put stuff up there when we're doing bombazos and we teach classes. And we would love to have anyone join us. Um, bomba is a tradition that just like any other tradition has sometimes um, had roles, right? Um, as you saw in the family, the men are playing the drums, the women and, and the men are dancing. Um, and some of the ways in which um, most recently um, some of those barriers have been transcended has been in that there are men now who put skirts and dance bomba um, because that's how they feel comfortable. There are women who say, I want to dance bomba without a skirt because I don't want to wear a skirt. Um, that's not how I feel comfortable. Um, there are women who play the drums now. I'm one of the first women to play um, the subidor um, in the bomba tradition in many, many, many years. And I'm not only Mexican, but I'm queer too. So there's that. So definitely have never felt like I don't belong and I think that is the beauty of uh, of Bomba and of the elders of the Cepeda family who are just happy people want to learn and engage uh, in, in, in Bomba and keep the tradition going. Uh, so um, the skirts, ¿Qué, ¿qué me dices de la falda y la influencia de la falda en, en la Bomba? Uh, bueno, eh, sabemos que tenemos mucha o que la Bomba tuvo 
su raíz de el, uh, la influencia haitiana, mucha gente dice que eh, tiene que ver mucho con, eh, 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 con esa influencia, ¿verdad? Y siempre se ha, se ha utilizado la, la falda como parte de, de eso. Hay gente que dice que eso es parte de la influencia del, de, la, de la mezcla del indio, del español y la africana, en la parte de, de española tuvo esa influencia, y, pero siempre se ha utilizado eh, en, la, en la tradición. O sea, la falda ha evolucionado, pero eh, siempre, siempre ha sido parte de... This, although the skirts and um, the way people dance to, the way people dress to dance bomba has, has definitely changed, and what you just saw in the last video was a very stylized um, way in which the family would dress to, to do bomba in now of a more staged performance. And the reason why Rafael Cepeda did that was to promote bomba um, as a sense of Puerto Rican pride because he felt like young people weren't learning, people weren't learning and moving the tradition. But the influence of the skirt, um, as Julia explained right now in Spanish, um, it, it comes, there, there's different um, theories. One is bomba is heavily influenced by by um, Haitian culture and the Haitian um, Afro Haitian or the Haitian tradition traditions um, also borrowed from the French because that's who colonized them and mm -hmm. so there's that influence and then mm -hmm. of course in 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 Bomba, which is Puerto Rican, uh, you have this, the Spanish um, influence as well. And, and then another just tidbit is, you know, in Puerto Rico up until uh, really recently with Luisa Capetillo and her way of resisting by wearing pants, women always wore skirts. Not necessarily these big Bomba skirts that you see on stage, but um, it was that was the colloquial uh, dress for all women in Puerto Rico was everyone just wore skirts. I mean, that was, that was, um, you know, the deal. Um, and so um, I hope we answered your questions. I don't know if there's any more questions before we move on. Yes. Um, is it improvised or a routine? And does it come from the diaspora? Para el, um, bueno, hay de las dos. Hay parte de la pero eso vino luego. Pero sí, la, la bomba es improvisada. Eh, los videos que vieron al, um, desde el principio, los, los tres videos que han visto de la familia, es eh, bomba improvisada, pero quizás van a ver otros videos donde hay coreografía cuando ya se hizo bomba de manera más moderna y se llevó a teatros para llevar parte de lo que es la referencia de nuestra historia, eh, pero sí. Sí, um, la, hay, hay de la tos, pero la bomba es naturalmente de eh, improvisación. So bomba is improvised, and you saw the conversations that the drummers and the dancers had in all three videos was an improvised conversation. However, there are there will be videos you'll see on YouTube of. of the Familia Cepeda in particular, doing more choreographed dances. Those were taken to the stage to create a whole evening of performance in order to give Bomba um, a, a space in Puerto Rican culture and, and kind of uplift it as a, a, a sense of Puerto Rican pride. Um, and Bomba is Puerto Rican. It was, it was born in colonial times in Puerto Rico, um, some say as early as the 1600s, uh, with this alliance of Taino and Africans um, in, an order, in, in, an, in order to resist, to build community, to capture some semblance of the, 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 what they left behind. Um, but it, and it has also, um, now there's been somewhat of a renaissance of bomba, I would say probably from the 90s forward. Uh, a lot of young people in Puerto Rico learning more and more about bomba. And then as folks migrate, right, because they have to for economic reasons, capitalism, here we go again. Um, as Puerto Ricans have to leave the island and, you know, search for a better life in the diaspora, um, bomba follows with them because it's a sense of them remembering. So, um, you know, once again, you see this transcendent of identity, of, of reclaiming home when you have to migrate and you have to leave, but you're, you're kind of like, you come across these man-made borders uh, or uh, whether they're geographic or quite frankly, um, um, just um, emotional, um, all kinds of ways in which we are, you know, we think we need to assimilate to become part of what is uh, being quote unquote American, what is being part of that American capitalist dream? Uh, we're going to move along, or unless there's any more questions. One more question, just one yeah. more. 
Um, if someone visits Puerto Rico, where are some good or the best places to see Bomba Live? <laughs> Yeah, oh, Julia. <risa> ¿Dónde en Puerto Rico pueden encontrar bomba? Bueno, si usted quiere ir a una escuela, no sé si podemos ponerle quizás en el chat. Sí. Lo, los lugares más... Uh... I, can, I can type as you... Oh, sí, perfect, porque perfect. Porque tenemos la escuela de bomba y plena, eh, Caridad Brena de Cepeda, que está en Viejo San Juan. Eh, tenemos la escuela de Modesto Cepeda, que está en Santurce. Eh, pero si sí, uh, los viernes tenemos, eh, hay bombas en la plaza de armas, eh, en Viejo San Juan también. Eh, ¿Dónde más? Es que hay bomba como... Everywhere. <laughs> there's, yeah, there's bomba everywhere. Julia mentioned a couple of bomba schools. And then in the metropolitan area, um, there's... Um, um, en San Jose, there's, there's this Tambuye, Marien Torres, and, and Taller Tambuye. Sí, el Boricua. She, they play bomba en el Boricua, um, which is in near the, near the UP. Uh, there's bomba at el, the, donde, donde tocan afuera, en, en, donde va la resistencia mucho. El, que, el, in the el, roof? No, la amiga de tu papá. La, que es como un patio afuera. Ah, eso. En el, en el condado? El callejón, no. En, Ah, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to post some in a second. I'm I'm drawing a blank, but there's I'll bomba also the email later. Oh, perfect. See, sí. but yes, okay. you can find bomba almost every day of the week. Um, mm -hmm. There's a place called the Roof. It just switched. It in switches Trujillo in, in Trujillo Alto, um, El Japi Bar in in Carolina. In Carolina. Um, so yeah, there's tons of places and downtown San Juan in Old San Juan on Fridays in the Plaza de Armas and ¿Cómo se llama la otra plaza? La Plaza Colón. Plaza Colón. Every Friday they switch. There's the bombazos there. And it's usually um, um, Tata Cepeda, uh, Escuela de Bomba y Plena de Caridad Trenes de Cepeda. And also in mm -hmm. Punte Lo Diseño. Uh, and they switch. And, and Taller Tambuye. Um, they all have, in La Plaza Santurce, you have bomba. So there's bomba everywhere. And last question. Uh, are there special shoes or bare feet? Julia, ¿zapatos especiales o descalza? Nosotros utilizamos zapatos. Sí, sí. Para la tradición de nuestra familia. En la Santurce tradición, uh, we wear shoes. Dancers sí. wear shoes. Um, Usualmente. Uh -huh. Y es por región también. En el área de, de, de Loíza pueden ver algunas uh, bombazos donde no utilizan zapatos. Pero eso también tiene que ver más There's con... regional differences depending on what region mm -hmm. in Bomba. Bomba, you find Bomba along the coastlines in uh, the, the metro areas um, in which there's Bomba Cangrejera, Santurce, which we're, we're students of, or I'm a student of, who does, you know, part of that family tradition. Uh, in Loisa, which is um, also in the metro area, you find Bomba in, in El Sur, in Guayama, in Ponce. That's a different style. There, it's all Bomba, just like variations of style. Uh, there's Bomba in the West, in in Mayagüez, in Hormigueros, in San Germán, um, and in Luisa in particular is where um, dancers tend not to always wear shoes. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to keep it moving, uh, but keep the questions coming after every piece. We're going to try to offer um, some uh, Q&A spots. Um, so, Taller Bombalele, now we're coming to our, you know, the founding of our school here in the Bay Area. We're based in the East Bay, but we travel East Bay, San Francisco, South Bay. Um, um, our motto or like, you know, is the Santurcia La Bahia, La Bomba's Vida, uh, because um, our teacher, Julia's dad, and he's kind of the godfather of our school, um, really lives bomba in his day-to-day -day life. It's like breeding for him, for this family. And so we pay homage to Santurce as being the home of Bomba Cangrejera uh, here, uh, here in the Bay as well. Um, but that's, you know, us with our little um, <laughs> matching shirts. <laughs> um, and so we want to show a video. So when we founded this school uh, or this class, uh, the approach for us was we really beyond teaching a class where you come and sweat it out and have fun on a Sunday or on a Saturday is we really wanted to build community uh, and felt like this, you know, Julia moved to California in 2013 and had a really bad bout of, of, of uh, homesickness. And was I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna lose her because she's just not happy. And uh, thank God for Taller Bombalele uh, a year later, we, 
we started building community. And um, as that community, we wanted to be intentional about making sure that that community honored elders as essential. And that when our bate came together, we really tried to uplift um, intergenerational connectedness and we feel like that's another barrier that this crosses right it's like you know bring your grandmother bring your mom bring your kids to our class you'll often see three generations taking our class um, the mom will come take a class and the grandmother will come with the kid and they're all learning because they're there and they're part of so here's a video of some of our elders we did a event Early on, we, we, were, we were born in, in September of 2014. And then in 2016, we did an event called Bailen La Calle, a mural walk in San Francisco in the Mission District. So these are, um, our friend Maya had been in a really bad accident and Bomba helped heal her. And we were, this is I think the first time she danced she, Bomba she since her accident. Mm -hmm. And then she was joined by some of our elders from our class. This song too, it was written by one of our Bomba um, uh, uh, community members named Maria Jose Montijo called Golpe de Agua. And it's talking about that water, that wave that comes in that can be healing, can be violent, but it's very much a part of living on an island. <laughs> Golpe de agua, los tambores a sonar. Golpe de agua, un grito Thank <laughs> you. 
Should we, I think I saw some questions coming in. Uh, we're going to yeah. be um, going, you know, we are, we're taking much more time than we thought, uh, Vanessa. So, um, you know, I don't know if we should keep, um, keep along. And then after these, th these three videos, I'll do a shorter versions of these uh, rest of these videos. Then we'll take those questions if that's okay. Yeah, like I would say, yeah, show maybe a minute of each video if you can, Perfect. and then we'll do, because we have some pretty good questions coming up here. Oh, I, I love it. All right. So um, these are some, uh, just, we did some slides of some of our community members. Mirna, who you saw dancing there, is retired and, you know, uh, kind of wanted to share. We did a, a we did a, a trip to Puerto Rico as a class community this past um, August to learn from the different regions of Puerto Rico uh, and Bomba. And so some of these are, are some of uh, reflections that our um, students had. This next song we wanted to show the video of, and we'll do about a minute of it. Um, listen to the lyrics. I hope that you can hear them. I hope that the audio is, is, is somewhat um, uh, being able to, to capture uh, Bomba as well as the visuals. Um, there's no dance in this video, but we wanted to show it because, um, you know, one of the, the, the folks, the person who wrote and sings this song, um, Ginger Cuevas, she's a, a hip hop artist and, uh, who goes by the art, art, art artist name of Artemis Prime. She's from Brooklyn, but it has been here for many years in the Bay Area. And she wrote this song because she was really, uh, we had a conversation one time as a community around um, just the, 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 the politics around immigration and how for Puerto Ricans, there is a story of migration to the United States and to the diaspora. And she was like, I understand there's a privilege to our migration in that we're, we are um, uh, considered American citizens. Um, there's, a, there's, there's a lot to unpack there because there's still all of these barriers. Um, but she wrote this song in honor of, of immigrants having to make that passage crossing these borders that frankly are, are capitalist made. Um, in search of a better life and 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 she said you know my heart goes out to you know my community mexican immigrants uh immigrants from south and central america and all other um countries right um that um have to come here as undocumented immigrants so this is a uh, ginger cueva song in honor of that in the tradition of bomba Madre tuvo que dejar su tierra cruzar un río frío Con su hijo tuvo que dejar su tierra Ay Dios mío, ay Dios mío we want to hear your uh, questions we're gonna we're gonna do only a minute of these however these videos are all available on our YouTube page uh, under Taller Bombalele so um, we're, we're gonna do a, a, a couple more here um, 
Uh, this is Lisi, one of our um, drummers. Uh, she's right there with the suspenders, um, talking about how Bomba, what Bomba has meant for her as a Puerto Rican descent in the diaspora. Um, she was, um, you know, grew up in the East Coast and moved to the Bay Area. Um, this next video is um, kind of a way that we fused together our Bomba ancestor, Rafael Cepeda Piles, with Artemis Prime, the, the woman that wrote the previous song. She wrote um, a little hip hop verse in this song. And this song is a song written by Rafael Cepeda Piles, talking about healing, about, um, you know, um, some, some sort of brujeria that was done on him and how he needs to heal. And then the lyrics that Ginger wrote for this are amazing because they're talking about that tension between home and where we migrate to, between assimilating and not, not forgetting where we come from. So again, you know, Bomba really does transcend whatever these borders or barriers are um, to really bridge and, and have those, uh, those conversations. I'm gonna probably fast forward so we can get to the part where she's um, doing the hip hop piece. This is the dynamic between the dancer and the drummer. show them a little more um like you guys performing too um and then they like, alternate between you guys and some more videos or should we go to questions let's go to questions and we only got two more short videos um i think what we wanted to more so convey here was um the different ways in which we um transcend barriers or boundaries um if you notice in all of these videos um that we showed um we mainly it's women drumming um our group also identifies as a very queer centric group um so um we we, we definitely welcome uh the trans and queer community as part of us um so let's go to questions um okay so there was one interesting question it goes is there any 
um, type of tension, conflict, or rivalry between the Bomba community, for example? Are there more people that are more focused on maintaining traditions and others that are trying to be more modern and innovative um, in the Bomba community at large? And I can read it in Spanish as well. Um, Existe un, algún tipo de tensión, conflicto o rivalidad dentro de la comunidad de Bomba? Por ejemplo, hay grupos más tradicionales y otros que buscan más innovación o modernización. Sí, um, me encanta esa pregunta. Eh, la realidad es que sí, no, no diría que es rivalidad. Um, creo que todo el mundo um, aprende de una manera diferente. Por ejemplo, uh, yo vengo de una familia muy tradicional, donde se mantiene mucho lo que es el fundamento. Eh, y, um, y también hemos visto en otros grupos eh, un approach diferente y creo que también eso viene un poco de la mano de, de lo que es el capitalismo, eh, eh, de, de cómo, cómo vendemos una tradición eh, que tiene una historia centenaria. Entonces también pues hay un poco de todo, podríamos decir. So Julia loves that question, and yeah, there is a tension. It's le more so a tension that is a, maybe a healthy tension versus a rivalry, mm -hmm. um, because there are folks always trying to innovate and create, and uh, we're going to show a couple of videos in, 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 in ways that we even uh, have innovated within Bomba. Um, and she says for her, you know, there are there. it's important for her to maintain the foundation, uh, some of the ways in which she has been taught, coming from a very traditional family, but she also acknowledges that people learn in different ways and that, that, that there's different pedagogies out there. And there are also folks who are um, more of the capitalist mind of how do I sell this? How do I best market myself? At the end of the day, um, right, there, we live in the capitalist world, uh, so people pay to go to class. And so we think a lot about access. Who has access to take our classes? If you're a person of color and you want to learn bomba and you're like, I don't have the 15 bucks every month, every week to come, we want you to come. So pay what you can, but be here. Um, we have the privilege of having day jobs and we can do that, right? We, we, we know there's people that can't and that mm -hmm. there's uh, folks mm -hmm. who have to charge and, you know, um, then it becomes a question of access. And so there's so many layers to that, but that's a really good question. Thank you. Thank you. I have um, two more. One, um, you might like this one too. Is there any particular type of food or drink um, connected to the practice of bomba? Yes, comida o, o, o bebida que está um, conectada con lo que es la tradición de bomba. Bueno, la realidad es que la gente le encanta venir a los bombas eh, porque quieren comer comida puertorriqueña. Y, y eso es, casi siempre preguntan, además de, de la bomba, ¿van a tener arroz con gandule, penil, mofongo? Eh, porque pues quieren tener a, a cerca y, y lo que son las en, en, San, en San Mateo de Cangrejos, como la fiesta de cruz y también las bombazos, ¿qué es lo que se sirve? Asopado. Tenemos <risa> tradicionalmente eh, para nuestro bombazo y para las cosas muy tradicionales puertorriqueñas siempre se hace. Asopado de pollo. So, yes. So, in the diaspora, in the Bay Area, folks who come to our bombazos, um, sometimes Julia cooks and they're like, are you going to make your arroz con gandule en pernil? Uh, sometimes we have our friend Wanda cook who cooks um, Afro, I mean, uh, Cuban vegan food. So, yes, there is food uh, related to this. More traditionally in the in the cangrejos um, bomba tradition and also in, in, in other um, areas because we went to a bombazo in August in Maya West and what is traditional served at bombazos is asopao, which is a stew. Uh, it's either a stew of gandules, pigeon pea stew, or a chicken stew. Um, and in the, the south, uh, Guayama Ponce, a big tradition of the bomberos at the turn of the century was what they call pitorro, uh, which is honcaña. <laughs> <laughs> and there's all these stories as of like before traditionally the drummers would tune their drums by putting a candle inside them the heat would stretch the skin and tune them uh and so while the skins were being stretched by the heat they were drinking pitorro uh, and that's a story that was told to us by some elders this last trip that we made to bonse so that's a very good question 
And um, also because asopao for Puerto Ricans is kind of like, I equate it to the Mexican pozole. And it's that um, mm -hmm. home, warm, soupy rice, like that very like traditional food that you want when you, it's kind of comfort food to an extent. Yeah, comfort food. And you can feed a lot of people with a big old, you know, um, La olla of that big old olla and you're just serving it. <laughs> Vanessa, your parents ate some uh, asopao and, in, and, and, <laughs> and, and, and <laughs> a that we had in Julia's grandfather's house. All right, house. my suegros, yes. <laughs> uh, suegros. Um, and then I have uh, two more questions. Um, what is, um, and I think you're, you're going to answer this further along. Um, are the rhythms what defined, if, if we want to define bomba in its rhythms, the interplay singer, drummer, dancer, or simply is it Puerto Rican? Um, so I think you're going to get into that and how they're different rhythms. And um, it, this, these are born in Puerto Rico, but there's also Afro Cuba dance, right? And in other islands. Um, yes. is it, Bomba is Puerto Rican, but it is influenced in, in, in uh, the traditions that come, came from Africa, like call and response, the improvisation of it. Um, it is an alliance between indigenous and black communities. Uh, its name comes from the drum. The drum was called the bomba. Now they're called barriles de bomba, but it gets its name from the drum. And there are um, different rhythms. Um, and some are the six, eight rhythms, the Yuba rhythms are um, influenced by Haitian traditions, uh, but bomba is Puerto Rican. It just has, it borrows kind of uh, different, um, uh, different ingredients from other um, traditions. And then part of the question was, if we want to define bomba, is it the rhythms? And um, I think we're, we'll get into the different types of Yeah, it's, types. bomba is more of a music and dance tradition. Uh, so it's, it's a whole, and we go back again to, this is, a co this is collective, and so if you don't have a singer, you don't have bomba. Uh, the drummers could show up, but if there's no dancer, no singer, no one to play the rest of the instruments, it, it's a semblance of bomba, like what we did at the beginning, it's a song, but it, we wouldn't call it bomba in its com com completion. And last question, would you say that bomba is a form of poetry or just to dance? ¿Cómo ves la bomba? ¿Como una forma de poesía o baile? Pues la verdad es que narra la historia. Eh, es, eh, se podría decir que sí, porque eh, la realidad es que narra lo que estaba ocurriendo en el diario vivir. Entonces es una manera de, de, eh, de traer eh, esa, esa narrativa Eco musica. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 it's both. Um, it, it, the songs tell a story uh, of uh, what life was like in that time when the song was written. And that is how we know of uh, previous generation bomberos is because in particular, Julia's grandfather, he wrote stories. He, he wove these stories with the song. And so all of these names came up and people started researching. Who was this? Who was that? Oh, shit, there were bomberos. And this was their story. So it narrates stories. Um, it, tell, it tells uh, historical journaling. Oh, great, great. Question. Creo que vamos a entrar a presentar lo que son los diferentes ritmos sí, y, 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 y también la intención del baile me gustaría compartirles a ellos. Yes, I, I know we, we want we we have so much we want to do and trying to rush through it all. Um, we're going to show two more short clips um, and these are uh, kind of uh, that conversation with Puerto Rico and Colombia. Uh, why Colombia in particular? The Afro-Colombian uh, traditions of Bullerengue um, have spoken to us as a bomba community because of the stories they tell and because of the history, the Afro-Latino uh, experience uh, at the hands of colonialism and capitalism. And so these are two Colombian songs that we uh, interpret in bomba. Um, so let's go, let's go to it. Oh, no, what did I do? Okay, here we go. Oh, yeah. I don't know why it's not letting me. Click, click on some part, a white part of, there you go. There we go, I was, I got scared there for a minute. This is called Golpe de Tambor. Apologize. <laughs> Oh, yeah. 
So when that happens, click on a white part of the slide and then click on the link. So just click on an empty part of the slide and then click on your link. Oh, good. Um, it's not letting me for some reason. We're gonna, I'm going to move on just for the sake of time. Um, so I think a couple of the things we wanted to also kind of make note, um, and the reason we're showing so many videos is the, the two of us, it's, it's really hard to convey what Bomba is as a, as a, as a pair. Uh, as you see, we, we roll deep. There's quite a few folks there. Um, you've got somebody uh, lead singing a coro that's called, it, it's responding with a, with a coro that's, that stays the same. Uh, and then you've got the, intera the interaction between the dancer and the lead drummer. As you notice, the dancer always salutes before they start the conversation. So they enter the space and then they salute not not necessarily the drummer, but the drum. Uh, the drum is seen as the ancestor in the room uh, who we're paying honor to. So I wanted to show a couple of um, photos, or should we do questions? Is there, are there any questions right now? Um, there's one question that's actually related to what you just mentioned. Um, so, ¿cómo, ¿quién o cómo se elige quién baila, canta o toca el tambor? So, uh, who or how is the person who sings, dances, or plays the instrument selected? How are those choices made? Pues es una combinación. Una vez eh, llegan a la clase, eh, podemos decir que eh, la, siempre nos presentan cuál es su inclinación, ¿verdad? Y también ahí uh, se van puliendo. Para eso, cuando tenemos... Por ejemplo, la clase podemos ver eh, cómo, cómo se van desarrollando, cómo se van desarrollando en qué áreas y cuáles son las áreas donde realmente hay un interés. Eh, y, y así más o menos se, se va definiendo. Así lo hacemos en, en, en nuestra clase, en el, en el grupo. In the context of our class, we really pay attention to what is interest, what piques our students' interest the most. There's mm -hmm. always books that lean one way or the other. Um, mm -hmm. And then that helps us kind of um, 
think through how we teach and how we focus on uh, folks doing different things. Um, and then they practice. And then when we feel they're ready, when we're in context of an actual performance, then uh, that's when, when they do those roles. Um, it's a little different now in diaspora and in, in the context of learning uh, outside of, of family lineage and tradition. Um, I, I know for Julia's family, her uncle Mario has been the singer for his whole life. Her dad has been the lead drummer his whole life. So that means no one else in the family, just the dad lead, was the lead drummer. And then there were folks that would graduate into certain roles. Um, but in, in the context of Bomba community in the diaspora, um, I think it is, it, it, it's, it's like depending on what school you're in and uh, how ready you feel. We approach it by two ways. One is we have bombazos once a month, which is an informal jam, jam session at a, at a kind of a restaurant bar that gives us space. And that's where we tell people to try out a new song. If you mess up, who cares? We're in community, it's not a performance. Um, it's us coming together and jamming and having a good time. Uh, if we are asked to do an actual performance, then we pick who can do this role better? Because again, it takes everyone knowing their role and being good at it with a collective consciousness mm -hmm. so that we all shine together. All right. So we're going to keep it moving because we want to get to some interactive and maybe all of us can we want do people it. to move. Yeah. Yeah. So um, here we have our slide that we're going to show some pictures. Uh, what we wanted to convey here is for us, uh, Bomba. In the diaspora, what I mean is outside of Puerto Rico and in Puerto Rico with these younger generations as we're learning, um, it's very much part of how we um, as activists um, come together um, in different movements. Um, so there's that. How are we, how has Bomba throughout history and still today challenged capitalism and colonialism, uh, both in Puerto Rico and the diaspora? We've had some opportunities to do that very directly with things that have happened politically in Puerto Rico, uh, with the situation with, <coughs> sorry, our dog is having, uh, with the situation that happened with Hurricane Maria, um, wanting to have a just recovery for Puerto Rico. It, it, you know, there were protests we, we, we participated in. Uh, the asking the governor of Iquito Sale to uh, resign created movements in Puerto Rico un, unseen before. I think only Vieques uh, was, was comparable to what happened, but in the diaspora as well. So we want to show some of the slides of the pictures of how, uh, you know, our group came together and quickly made charts on Noa La Junta, the fiscal uh, responsibility, irresponsibility of the government in Puerto Rico, uh, you know, giving any airplay to that. That's Ginger in the video you just saw at Grito de Lares. We, we uh, every year participate. Um, you know, we very much have an open community where all are welcome. Uh, we participated with our Boricua Lesbians and Friends <laughs> contingent uh, as a Bomba community. I think if anyone wants to be part of our community, it's kind of like you've got to roll with us and we do a lot of community engagement and activism. This is a, a lot of the Port, um, Puerto Rican um, queer activists in the Bay Area. So we, we provided the Bomba music for their float. Um, the Beria Boricuas, we came together uh, to denounce Ricky Roseo when that was happening. And this, these are the protests we organized. Our Bomba community organized these protests in Oakland. Uh, we did a vigil in Oakland. Julia's father was here visiting and was super happy to be part of that. Um, and these are all uh, Puerto Ricans uh, or, uh, you know, Puerto Rican descent and, act and allies coming together to protest, to ask Ricky Roseo to, uh, you know, not ask him to demand that he resign. Uh, and Bomba was at the center of, of the protests that happened, not only here in, in the Bay Area, and we saw so many people were like, we didn't know who they was like, there are so many Puerto Ricans here. They, they came out, you know, to protest. This is some protests that happened in uh, Tampa, in Seattle. These are all Bomba communities. Uh, Bombazo and Solidaria por Dignidad. Uh, in, this is in, in Puerto Rico, right, in Viejo San Juan. Uh, this is a Bomba community in Orlando. 
right? They, it, there were uh, Bomba communities everywhere coming out, even uh, in Spain and I believe Japan, they were having protests, the Bomba, the Bomba community. Um, this is in Puerto Rico. Um, Marien Torres and Taller uh, Tambuye uh, have really held it down in terms of being part of the activist community in Puerto Rico. Uh, every, every International Women's Day, they do events against the femicides that happen in Puerto Rico at alarming rates and the fact that the government government hasn't done anything about it and so this was this year's um celebration and look at all those women on the drums you know bomba was a uh, key to that um Taller Bomba Lele, we, we've done a lot of bomba um, in solidarity with different movements to raise funds. We raised funds for Hurricane Maria and also for the earthquake re relief. Um, we've been there for uh, the Oscar Lopez Rivera political prisoner. Um, you know, Taller Bomba Lele, we're always uh, wanting to be part of that. So um, we'll take some questions now and then we'll get into the percussion uh, and try to try our luck with a couple of rhythms. And again, I apologize, our dog is having a fit outside. Um, there are no questions right now, so you can keep going. Perfect. So now we're going to try to get into uh, showing a little bit of a little show and tell here of the drums. Um, so Bomba, um, it gets its name from the drum. This is a barril de bomba. I'm going to lift it up so you can see it. Oh, sorry. Oh. This is a barril de bomba. So it's made out of a wooden barrel. This is tuned with pegs, as you can see, with a, a, like a steel rope. Um, it's a goat skin. They have the, this is the primo or the subidor, which is tuned higher pitch than the buleador. This is done in a more traditional style. It's it's peg tuned, so you hit the pegs with a um, with a with a a, ma a mallet or 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 a, what do you call it? A hammer, a hammer to tune it. Then you have the buleador. So this is another. Um, barril. Now this is this is uh, tuned with screws, with a wrench. Much easier to tune. This one is tuned with a lower sound. Um, most traditionally, the drums were made out of um, oak barrels, which was what was accessible during the colonial times in Puerto Rico. Uh, the subidor or primo is a higher pitched drum. That's the one that speaks, and it has the conversation with the drummer. The buleadores, you can have one, two, a hundred. They're playing the rhythm. Uh, there's, uh, they say up to 26 rhythms of bomba. Traditionally, only about eight or nine are still played um, more consistently throughout the island and the diaspora. Um, and then you have the maraca. So the maraca is made, is made out of an iguera, which is a plant in Puerto Rico, a gourd. Um, this is a pretty small one. They can be really big. The maraca is played by the singer. And the maraca establishes two, oh, the, the, traditionally, the <laughs> singer establishes two things with their maraca and with their song. They establish what rhythm is going to be played by the song they, they start and they establish how fast that song is gonna go because they're keeping the beat with the maraca. So that's one maraca for a bomba ensemble, only one. Uh, traditionally, it is played by the singer, the lead singer. Then you have your quads. These are also um, made out of wood. Traditionally, they were much thicker, uh, almost like a, like a broomstick. And traditionally, they were played on the side of the buleador. And uh, now they're played on a smaller piece of wood that's on a stand because we want to be conscious of our ergonomics in our back. So this, this is the qua. In a bomba ensemble, you will have one lead singer playing the maraca. This is traditionally, right? Uh, you will have one person playing one set of quas. You will have one person subiendo or playing the primo or subidor, having that conversation, improvising with the dancer. And you can have one, two, 10, 100 buleadores, as long as they're keeping the beat in time together. So that whole ensemble comes together and you need coro. Uh, coro is, there are those singers that are responding to the lead singer with a, with a consistent chorus. Um, so that's the instrumentation of bomba to complete your bomba bate then comes in the dancer. And so the dancer, what, what speaks to the dancer, Julia? ¿Por qué sale la bailadora o el bailador a bailar? Porque le llama la canción. 
esa, eh, eh, particularmente la historia que se está narrando y también es, es un, se esté tocando. So the dancer is inspired by the song. Uh, it could be because that's the, in the rhythm they like. It could be because that, the story the song is telling. Uh, but the, the dancer will come out when they are really feeling that song, that moment. Um, and, and yeah, that's the magic. That's what brings Bomba together. So let's, let's move it along here. Saces or, or rhythms of Bomba. In Bomba, the rhythms are referred to as saces. Um, so there's uh, difference of dif different opinions about how many saces there are. I've heard it's as much as 26. Um, but a lot of them have been, um, I wouldn't say lost, but maybe forgotten. Uh, and they're not played. Um, right now, most of the rhythms are in the metric of 4-4. Four, four, um, and except for the yuba rhythms. Uh, yuba are in 6-8. Um, and so, um, you know, the yuba rhythm we, we, we um, have learned came from it was influenced by the Haitian arrival. So when the mm -hmm. Haitian revolution happened, there was a thing called La Cellula de Gracia, where there was a lot of encouragement of, settle, of, of settling in Puerto Rico. With that came, of course, um, what was deemed as property back in that day for these settlers, uh, which was um, humans in bondage, right? And so you brought, there was a lot of folks that came to Puerto Rico, migrated to Puerto Rico from Haiti. Um, and so then that influenced Bomba. Uh, in the songs, there's, a, there's, there's Creole in a lot of the Bomba songs, um, and not just Spanish. And of course, the, the rhythm of Yuba. Um, so we're, some of the rhythms, uh, we wanna work on two today, um, Sika and yuba, which are two very common rhythms in bomba. Uh, Sika is what you usually open a bomba experience with, which what we call a bombazo, um, because it's, it's um, the coros for, or the songs for Sika tend to be one word songs. So it's very accessible, because ideas, you get everyone involved. If you're in the room where bomba's happening, or in the space, we're like, everybody sing with us, everybody move your body. Um, and so uh, we want to introduce Sika. Uh, other rhythms include Gracima, Balance, Cuembe, Oyomula. We did Oyomula at the beginning. Miserere como mi And the rhythm sounds like pa, pa, tum, 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 pa, pa, tum, 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 pa, pa, tum, tum, tum. So that's Oyomula. And then from the region of, of Louisa, then there's Seis Corrido, Rulé, Corvé. Um, and, you know, the list goes on. We, uh, I think, provided an overview that lists these rhythms. So um, definitely, um, you know, there's more rhythms listed there. Are there any questions? Uh, yes. Um, they would like to see you perform another song. Perfect. Woo! OK, <laughs> so um, let's, let's, we're going to do this, and then we're going to check in, just because I, I just want to make sure you uh, can hear. So I'm going to sing a song in the rhythm of Cuembe, and then we'll um, we'll, we'll um, do some Sika and, and maybe folks can practice like on your, on your legs, on your lap or on a tabletop. And um, right now we're gonna play uh, the rhythm of Cuembe and I'm gonna sing a song called Cuembe Nama um, that also was written by Julia's grandfather, uh, Rafael Cepeda Tiles. So the coro goes like this and maybe you can write it in the, um, in the chat box, Vanessa. Cuembe, Cuembe Nama. Cuembe, Cuembe, Nama, N-A-M-A, Nama, which is basically nada más, but in Puerto Rican <laughs> Spanish, we like to cut syllables at the end, so it's Cuembe, Cuembe, Nama, that's the coro. Let me see, if, I'm going to back this up, see if you can see the drum, and hopefully... Um, um, Denise, can you yes. um, take away the slides when you perform so they can see you better? That way, because... Yeah, how do uh, I do that? That way you guys are the full screen for them. Stop share. How about stop share? Uh, I, stop? I believe so, yes. There you go. Oh, cool. Does that make a difference? Can you see the drums? Uh, yeah. Yes. Perfect. See? Si. Si. Perfecto. Oh. Gracias. And you can see our dog that goes a little bit crazy because she loves bomba, so she might start dancing. <laughs> All right. 
and hopefully you can hear us. So sing with me. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna start. Most of it, the Zoom, you know, comes in and out, but um, I think we, they heard you, I hope. Did you guys get to hear? <coughs> yes. Awesome. Gracias, Amy. Gracias, Angelique. Okay, so. All right, so if you're home or wherever you are, maybe there's a desktop, tabletop, your lap. Um, we want to go into the rhythm of Sika. So Sika is in 4-4. Four, four, and usually for me, it's always helpful to, to, to sing it first. Um, and we always try to do it in, in kind of like concept, concept, context of the downbeat, right? So if we were to sing it, it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, ba, dun, 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 ba, bam, 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 ba. So now we're going to do the pattern. So for um, those of you that are right-handed, you're going to start with your dominant hand, your right hand, and you're going to go right, left, left right so he's gonna go right left left right ba, 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 ba. so we're gonna go really slow and i'm gonna play it on the drum play it on your lap uh right left left right if you're left-handed then it's left right right left so let's try it really slow um and if you could play maraca i would love it the maraca keeps the beat it keeps us on time one two three Four and right, left and right, right, left and right, right, left and right. Um, 
I wonder if we should play the video. So I did these videos for my uh, our students because we haven't yet figured out how to do um, the classes uh, through Zoom because it doesn't always capture the sound. Uh, but basically, that's Sika. Uh, we're going to do a song with it right now. Uh, that way all of you can help me with the chorus. And um, usually it's one word choruses. So um, if we were to do a song in Sika called Viento, um, it would sound like this. Um, and then it's Viento, which is that breeze that comes in from the ocean. It's a song by uh, also Julia's grandfather. Um, and this song has a lead in. So the, the, the lead singer will say, A la mar se fue viento, tiraselo a la mar, viento. Regresaselo a la mar, viento, llega el huracán, viento, llega San Cristian, viento, el agua cero, viento, oye, llega el mar, viento, regresaselo a la mar, viento, a la mar se fue, viento, tiraselo a la mar, viento. So, the way this sounds with the rhythm, and remember, it's right, left, left, right, right, and this is the rhythm that Julia is going to teach right now in a little bit dancing. So you want to remember this because the dancer, what is the most important thing for the dancer to hear, Julia? The buleo. The buleo. And who's, what, which one is the buleo? The buleador. It's the second drum, right? Mm -hmm. So the lead drum, the subidor, does buleo, but they then they start improvising because as soon as that dancer comes into the, the space, that lead drummer is focused on the dancer. The dancer tells the drummer what to say. So once that dancer doesn't move, that drummer better be ready to respond uh, because it's improvised. So we don't exactly know what they're gonna say, what's the first sentence gonna be. So it's a conversation. But at the same time, the dancer's a little bit challenging that drummer. Like, oh, do you know what you're doing? You can, you got this. So you, I, I hope that came through in the videos. All right. So um, let's do this. I, we have a bunch of what? How many? 42 bomberas and bomberos. So that's great. Uh, Bomber X is in the house. Um, so I'm going to start by going, a la mar se fue viento, tiraselo a la mar. Viento, tiraselo a la mar. Thank you, Julia. Julia's playing like triple duty today. She's like, uh, you know, when there's only two of us, we gotta, we gotta multitask. All right, here we go. Everybody be ready. A la mar se fue viento, tiraselo a la mar. Bien, regresaselo a la mar. Viento, Any questions? 
Are we good? Um, no, I don't see any questions right now. Are you going to do the dancing after? Yes, we're, we're going to do the dancing after. We're going to have to shift things a little bit. Um, that, yeah, I hear you. Hand the camera out a little bit, um, but we're out of time, so I've got a few. Ooh, i got like nine minutes. So we're Perfect. You're doing great. We're, we're really trying to stay on time. All no, right, so here is a Yuba. So Yuba is, is so Tika, Ba, Tum, 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 Ba, Tum, 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 Ba. Think about what does that make, how does that feel to you? Because it's important to understand these rhythms and how they feel in your body, right? So, on. Keep that in mind. Now we're gonna move into Uba. Let me know how that makes you feel. So. Here's how you bust sound. We're gonna sing it first. Be ready on your lap, your your tabletop. If you've got some sort of drum, a djembe, a bonga, whatever, you can you know use that as well. Uh, you're gonna start with your right hand for dominant folks. If that's you, your dominant hand. If you're right-handed like me, right hand. If you're left-hander, left hand. And then you're gonna do for right-handers. You're gonna go right, right. So let's sing it. One, two. skirt flow 
And imagine if at the ed edge of that skirt, they had a paintbrush and, and, and how that would, you know, what kind of uh, things that would paint. And so this song is saying, Catalina pintó un lero, Catalina painted in, in, in the way she danced a lero. Uh, and it talks about um, that dancer. Algo que quieras no. All right, are you ready to sing with us? So I will say, Catalina Pintulero. Oh, but it's Yuba La Marile. I'm so sorry. The coro is Yuba La Marile. The, the song is called Catalina Pintulero. That's the verse. And the chorus is Yuba La Marile. <laughs> sorry, Vanessa. So I will call the, the song Catalina Pintulero. Yuba La Marile. Bailero de Milero. Yuba La Marile. Catalina Bailalero. Yuba La Marile. Overall, I could hear it. I'm not getting responses right now, but overall, I could hear it. Perfect. All right, cool. So we are going to yes, they can. Um, move a little bit. So for folks who are at home, um, you know, Bombas dance with your body. And uh, for folks who choose to wear skirts, uh, obviously, not every, not, you know, if you don't have a skirt at home, it could be anything that you know, grab a towel, scarf. grab a scarf, whatever you have that, you know, every, every, every flowy, any flowy material, flowy material that you want to use <laughs> at home. We can't see you, so don't worry. We're only going to be able to see Julia. I'm not a dancer, so I hide behind the drum. Uh, but Julia's is uh, going to be showing us the basic step of Sika and maybe a couple of piquetes. Piquetes, P-I-Q-U-E-T-S. E-T-E-S is the language that the drum, that the dancer uses. It's called piquete. So if I'm a dancer and I go like that, that's pra, that's a sound that the drummer needs to pick up on and that's called a piquete. So um, Julia's gonna go through kind of the, what is the pa pathway to dancing in terms of what are the, what are the different steps uh, when a dancer's coming into the bate. So give us a second, we gotta move the camera a little bit, make sure Julia can be seen. Okay. Well, this is I your time for a water off. break. Woo woo! Ready to go. <laughs> Practice without skirt first so you can see. Can folks see Julia there? Can you see? I we I can. Yes. You can yes? Yes, see. So let's practice um without skirt first. 
so you can see. I can't see your feet though. No. Oh, okay. No, no, no. No. See. Uh, we had it a minute ago. Un poquito más. A little más. Un chin chin. Y la perra, sí. Ahora sí. ¿Sí? Perfect. Okay, Julia, project just so they can hear you because... Uh... All right. So, let's start with the basic step of Sika. So, let's start with your uh, left hand your right foot so it's opposite right so we here and we start marking so let's start pa, tum, 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 pa, right and we start marking the beat let's count eight pa tum 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 pa tum 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 pa tum 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 pa tum 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 pa tum let's count eight one two Nicely done. Is everybody moving? <laughs> I was moving. That was great. So let's count eight marcamos and then we entered um, to our basic step. Okay? So you're marking for eight in place and then you do the basic step. The basic step. And this is going to be uh, your dance area, right? For your movement. So Try to keep your arms up. Como al... Shoulder. Hombre, hombro. Like, like a parallel shoulder to your height. shoulders. Shoulder height. Yes, because right now we don't use any skirt or scarf and everything, but the goal is uh, wearing the skirt, right? So it's very important for... You want to 
quiere que la falda se mueva, tener espacio. You need space. You need space for the skirt. For the flow. skirt, right? So, and then, now practicamos ocho marcando in place, and then we're going to practice a basic, and then let's practice the paseo. Paseo means when you do your basic, but how you uh, travel, the space. travel the space with your a basic. Stride, a stride, right? Right, right. Let's observe first. We hear marcando, right? And then we do going to jump to the basic. And then when I say paseo means you travel the space. Is you're going to do like a little circle in place. So you're going to do like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, basic, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, paseo. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Preguntas. Todo bien. Super. Sí. Sí. No, they do it once without a skirt and then you put the skirt on. So okay, perfect. Super. <risa> Están parados moviéndose. <risa> A sudar. <risa> es que esta falda tiene dos piezas. La parte de frente. Y para que quede más cómoda. So, por favor. Busque un scarf or flowy material. So, estamos ready. So, I'm, improvising, I'm improvising here. Woo! On That's great. A sheet. <laughs> okay. So, ¿cómo cogemos la falda? Casi como en el medio. Kind of in the middle. Kind of in the middle, you can feel like a balance right here. And we're looking for your best buster, very elegant, right? And we're ready, Denise. All right, here we go. Let's start my candle. One, two. Oh. 
when you be able to have that communication improvised with the primo and subidor. So let's start again and you can observe all the dynamics, right? How the dancer can make, be able to make the paseo, salute the drum, and make the piquetes, right? All right. So when Denise, uh, when Julia stops talking, we stop hearing the drum. It's the only problem. Oh, okay. So I'll sing along with the drum to see if that helps. Okay. Okay, and I'll, I'll keep counting. Let's practice our first piquete, and we're gonna close the piquetes close in on numbers. So maybe do it without music, and we'll sing the music so they hear what the dynamic sounds like. Okay. From from the from the the piquete from the piquete. Okay. So you're here, so you're here and you are saluting the drum or paying honor to the drum, which is the ancestor, right? This is the drum that you're going to have the conversation. So it's almost like when you're going to have a conversation with someone and you're, hi, I'm Denise, how's it going? That's kind of like the dynamic. And then you start your sentence. So, pa, tu, 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 pa, tu, 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 pa, tu, 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 pa. Again. So that's one sentence. Let's try with music. First sentence, what do you do, Julia? You go back to the basic step. You go back to traveling the space in that basic step for Sika. So, let me do it for you. I think they're trying to practice and move, so I don't see any typing going on. Oh, <laughs> Let's do it. So, uh, Julia, maybe do sentence one and sentence two, and we'll keep it going. All right, perfect. Let's practice just the piquetes. One, two, three, four, and one. Go back to the first sentence. Oh. 
mean close so it's like part of the beginning but with intention it's very important one cross two cross over three cross over four and five so you're five. you're crossing your leg over and then you're taking a step back at the end cross one, one cross two, two cross three cross four step back cross one cross two cross three cross four step back the second one the second one one two three four back but it'll be it'll be faster right when we start para, 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 para.
that's the second one. So it sounds like ta, 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 ta. So wait. Cinco, seis, seven, eight, and one. Awesome. Thank you. How's everybody doing? Hello again, everybody. Oh, good. Are people sweating yet? Oh, I see. Feeling good. Great. So fun. That was amazing. Wait till you do it live. Yeah. <laughs> right. We're so looking forward to being able to do some live bomba again. We'll stay healthy and we'll get there. Mm -hmm. um, well, we wanted to show a little bit about, about of the rhythms, and we did uh, two rhythms in, in bomba percussion uh, that we sang, which was Sika, the first one. Pa, dun, tu, dun, pa, dun, tu, dun, pa, dun, tu, dun, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right. She's and then we did Yuba. Pat to go to pat to go to right, right, left, right, 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 left, right, pat to go to pat to go to. And then you danced in the rhythm of Sika, which is usually how we introduce classes with uh, the rhythm of Sika. So, um, uh -huh. podríamos pasar por los ritmos básicos para que ellos puedan escuchar y quizás nos digan que sea escribiendo. So Julia would like to do an exercise, and then we'll go to quiz, questions. pop quiz. Like a little bit of a, of a um, really important is the concept for us of bomba transcending space and time. Um, in 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 some of the ways that we've been taught by the family, the Sabela family is how they live. Uh, um, the values of Bomba in their daily life and what that means for a Black family. Um, one story that really stuck out for me that Julia told, uh, that Julia's dad actually told me was that um, since they were very young, they, they, the whole family was part of La Familia Cepeda, a group that the grandfather directed. <laughs> and they, they, they started performing in a way to give it a, the importance he felt it needed to have in Puerto Rico as music um, that was born out of Black and Taino peoples. Um, and so one, they went to a hotel to perform and, and they were asked to come in through the back, through the kitchen, um, when that wasn't what they saw other performers, you know, being asked to come in. And so Julias told me how as a kid that really kind of, um, impacted her in terms of understanding what it meant to be black um and what what that um you know well i'm not going to speak for you but no sé si quería decir otra cosa al respeto no y que también el tambor es importante para nosotros porque 
fue lo que ha puesto eh, comida en la casa, eh, lo que nos ha unido como familia al sol de hoy. Estamos haciendo nuestro, esta generación está haciendo su primer conversatorio como familia. Entonces, ver que esa coreografía que vimos en 1970 todavía se hace dentro de la familia es como muy particular, es como muy emocionante para, para mí. Que el tambor, nosotros lo sentimos que tiene vida. Por eso decimos que la bomba es vida. For her, they say the bomba is life because for them the, the drum gives life, it breeds life. I mean, uh, for them as a family, that was how they sustained themselves was um, both spiritually and mentally and financially was through the bomba music and the bomba tradition. Um, no, and no, 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 no. Her grandfather no, no, no. made the barriles, her dad, uh, the oldest living bomba artisan who makes these are, these drums are all handmade. They're not mass produced. Um, and uh, one thing that I think is really important to shout out about this tradition is how it's rooted in, um, homemade, handmade art, art, artistry. So all of the instruments, the, this, this barrel that we play, the quaz on, the quaz, the actual stick, they're all handmade by artisans in Puerto Rico. Uh, there's, some, there's some in the diaspora, but the ones that we have playing today are, are made by Julia's dad, his apprentice, Emmanuel Martinez um, um, Pagan, who, who, who learned from him, has been learning from him for like 20 years and is an apprentice. Um, and the maracas are made out of, um, these are all materials native to Puerto Rico. So it's uh, wood from Puerto Rico or from materials in Puerto Rico. The higueras, the, the maracas for bomba are made out of the gourds found in Puerto Rico. The seeds are found in Puerto Rico and they're made by artisans who has uncle Mario makes maracas. Um, some Barbara friends of ours, uh, Barbara Perez and her partner, Luis Ramos, Taller Kenuati, K-E-N-U-A-T-I. You can find them on Facebook. You can buy these maracas and support local artisans. Can support it, can um, and they're not <laughs> mass produced. They're made by hand per order for you with their energy. Um, so, um, you know, we, 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 we would be remiss if we didn't say that. That's a big part of it. And I think the other thing Julia was saying was how as a family, they're still uh, united across uh, diaspora. A lot of them have moved and, you know, had to migrate into the East Coast. Julia's here in California, Florida. Um, but the younger generations, they're now connecting through Zoom. They're doing uh, online discussions as well. Um, and, and there's one on May 9th. We can send the information to Vanessa. It's a Zoom. It's going to be talking about the history of San Mateo de Cangrejos and Bomba. And um, I think it's, there's a, we, we're part of that Red Cangrejera, the, the, of, of the, the, what do we call it? The network of Bomba Cangrejera Cepeda. And so, um, you know, wanted to mention that before we go to questions. So here's the exercise we're gonna do. Uh, we do a lot of interactive exercises with our students and we do a lot of like, you know, um, bringing everyone's voice into the circle. And so it's a little hard this way, but we could maybe bring everyone's voice into the chat. And so we're gonna be playing rhythms for you. Uh, we'll name the rhythm and then we'll play it for you. And maybe one word, how that makes you feel. And there's no right or wrong answer. And this is really like, how do you feel it? And I hope you can hear it. I will sing it and play it. So hopefully you can get it. So we first learned Sika, we'll play a little bit of Sika, right? Ba, 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 ba.
Dios Mula. Okay, we have a few comments. We have a few responses so far. Um, do you want me to give them to you now, or do you want to wait until you do all of them? We have it set up in a way that we can see it now. Can you see? Oh, you can see the comments? Okay, great. Keep going. <laughs> Someone was saying it felt like breaking of chains. Yes. Yes. Yes, you can't, I mean, you can't be at a bomba and not move your body or feel something. Um, uh, so this is like, the sound went away. So we do have one question um, about the faldas and whether they change according to the region um, or if, if, is it uniform bomba uh, attire or is there a change according to say the south of the island, the east, the west, north, anything like that? Me encanta esa pregunta porque es muy importante de cómo eh, siempre en varias regiones se usa la falda. El, eh, pero, eh, por ejemplo, en el área de Mayagüez, Ponce, no, en el área de Mayagüez no se usa eh, las faldas grandes eh, o se hacen piquetes más altos. O sea, la, la, la mujer utiliza la falda o, o los movimientos son más con los pies y la falda se usa para acompañar. Es, es, es solamente eh, para, para eh, utilizar la falda como abierta y lo que se marca son los movimientos de los pies. En la región de nosotros, que es la región cangrejera, eh, se utiliza mucho el movimiento de la falda abierta o movimientos más grandes. Eh, básicamente esa es, uh, en, en el área de, de, de Loíza, el secorrido 
eh, actualmente tiene una tendencia eh, y más visto por los jóvenes donde la falda es como opcional. So there are differences. It's a great question in terms of the styles of the skirts. Um, in Maya West, in the West Coast of Puerto Rico, they, they don't use as wide a skirt because the dancers tend, the, the dancers who wear the skirts tend to use the, um, the movements much lower because they, they more adorn the footwork. So the, the Maya West style of dance uses more footwork and the, the skirt is secondary and their, their movements are more uh, down, more, a little lower. In the Bomba Cangrejera, which is the tradition that we are from or that we learned from, uh, that Julia was born into, uh, they have wider skirts and they use the skirt movement up here more and it's more focused on the extension of the skirt uh, versus the footwork. Work. In the area of Loisa, in that tradition, they, they in, the, in, in, in the past did use skirts. Now there's been a movement towards less skirts, so uh, more, more the, the younger folks tend to dance Loisa style without skirts, and it's more optional. Um, and that is another kind of tradition that is like, if you find a seamstress that can make you a bomba skirt, Wow, I mean, we've been we've we've had a hard time finding uh, you win the lottery. You win the lottery. Um, mm -hmm. And um, there's a song written by a friend of ours, Kili Vialis from Maya West, and the song and I'll translate it, but it's in Spanish, of course, and it's like La mujer de Maya West no levanta mucho el vestido, and it's talking <laughs> about the style of dance in Maya West. The ladies of Maya West they don't pick up their 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 skirt or their dress too high when they dance. And that's because they're known for having more subtle movements. Um, so there's one more question. Um, is, it, is it always only one dancer? Oh, good question. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, Siempre hay uno más una bailadora, un bailador. Depende de la región. Eh, y también en el área de Santurce, eh, la bomba se baila en pareja. Salen en, en pareja a bailar. Eh, pues, es también una tendencia más moderna. It does depend on the region. Um, there are regional subtleties to how it's danced. Um, so I'm going to expand a little on what Julia said and translate for her. Uh, so one is, uh, for example, in, the, in Santurce, it, traditionally uh, it's danced in pairs. Um, so um, the pair will come out and then the, the woman will dance while the man um, kind of comes is still dancing and moving, moving around and then they'll take turns speaking. Um, right now, it, it's the more modern tendency is it's one at a time. And then I also want to add to that, that there's also, there's the improvised bomba when everyone tells their own story, as long as it's within the protocols of that rhythm. Um, and then there's choreographies um, where you'll have multiple dancers doing a choreographed piece. Um, maybe not all of them are speaking to the drum, but they're all in the space. Um, that's one thing. And then in the past, in, in the south of Puerto Rico and in the west, women did not speak to the drum. That's a more modern thing. So the women adorned the men, but only the men came and spoke directly mm -hmm. to the drums. Mm -hmm. The women in San Mateo de Cangrejos were known as being rebels because where uh, women uh, kind of as pretty early on started speaking to the drum is in San Mateo de Cangrejos. Bomba Cangrejera, it's known for uh, women uh, speaking to the drum and the movements of the style of the women uh, is, is noted as being uh, I don't know, I don't want to use the word violent, but being very strong and like uh, there was a dancer called La Ponchinela and she was known as someone who broke that mold and would really ch challenge the drummers and really throw some heavy duty piquetes mm -hmm. at the drummers. Y también podemos ver lo que, no, lo que se llaman los challenge en, en pareja, aunque cada uno baila a la vez, también hay, en, en, como tú dijiste, ¿no? en ciertas coreografías, it, I, yes, I and there's donde, sometimes a dynamic where you'll have sentom. two dancers, not necessarily uh, a gender, not necessarily a woman and a man, it could be two women, it could be two men, that are um, challenging each other within the space uh, when they speak. So they, they kind of take turns, but they're um, approaching the drummer, and each of them are challenging the drummer and challenging each other in, in when they dance. And sometimes those are done within the context of a choreographed piece, or they're, you know, they can happen spontaneously too in a bombazo where you, there's two really good dancers, everybody's looking at them like, are they gonna do a challenge? Like, what's gonna happen? So that's a dynamic that happens too. 
So if you could just tell them, um, we probably have like three minutes, um, what a bombazo is exactly, and then tell them about AU Lounge in Oakland for those sure. that live in the area. Sure. So a bombazo is when bomba happens in the context of community, not as a performance, but it's more of a ventetu or a like jam session where all are welcome and folks are encouraged to participate. Uh, even if you've never done bomba before, it could be as simple as singing viento, you know, one word course. Um, it happens um, usually uh, for us, it's once a month. And that's generally the tendency nowadays is it happens once a month before, like Kule can probably speak more to that. It, it was for any occasion in a family that practiced bomba. It was like, oh, someone's birthday, bomba. Somebody got baptized, bomba. Oh, somebody, whatever. Um, but now we do it once a month at AU Lounge in Oakland. It's, uh, I think, 2430 Broadway. It's in uh, downtown Oakland next to Mua, a restaurant right across from Mua. And AU Lounge, um, we really appreciate because uh, they opened their doors to us back in, I think it was 2016, and we've been mm -hmm. the resident once a month bomba bombazo uh, community holding it down and they're um the third sundays of the month after covid of course uh the third sundays of every month from 4 30 to 7 30 au lounge in oakland you can see us play bomba for quite a while because we all love it and it's hard to get us to stop and then we play some dj music in between so it's 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 a fun family friendly event um all ages and usually we'll have a food uh <coughs> pop up or someone, uh, Wanda Cuesta Cruda is a Cuban vegan chef, uh, usually is uh, selling her Caribbean vegan delights. Yeah. Okay, so do we have any final questions or comments for Denise and Julia before we end our awesome webinar? I don't see any questions. We'll give a few more seconds. Um, I really appreciate your time, your energy, and how well you've been able to improvise, uh, shelter, sheltering in place and sharing bomba, which is anything but in place. <laughs> um, but I think it's been a beautiful way of coming together and breaking the rhythm and the monotony of the barriers that we're in in our own homes have become our barriers right in our borderlands. and. We got to share it all in community and we all danced together and we sang together. And I think it's been really, really inspiring and beautiful. Um, Jose Alvarez says that he really enjoyed it. Thank He's, you, Jose. Um, yes, and yes. John, um, and these are all my wonderful students. Um, some in my undergrad class, some in my grad class. Oh, here we can, we get all the comments. You guys are seeing the comments now, Thank right? You. Michelle was my student at UCSC years ago. Nice. Um, so it's been really fun. I have students, I have friends from my gym are here. Um, I'll go back to the gym one day after this. Um, so it's been, it's been really lovely how much you brought everybody together. Thank you. Thank you, Vanessa, for inviting us, um, bringing Bomba into the academia space and your colleagues for the work you've been doing on um, decolonizing borderlands. It's such an important conversation mm -hmm. and um, way of resisting uh, colonized mentality. And, and, and so we appreciate you for the work that you do and mm -hmm. all of the community of uh, different students that came together to give us three hours of your time today to uh, hold space with us. Thank you. So they're wondering if we can make the videos available. I'm happy to share um, the ones that they, you know, the older ones and I send the links along. Yeah, send the links along. And then the ones we shared, they're actually in our YouTube channel that anyone can see. If you look, Taller Bombalele, we have a channel and we have maybe about 30 videos of, I don't know, maybe 20, I don't know, something like that. But you can see, uh, we try to post videos every so often. So uh, look us up on YouTube and, you don't even have to subscribe, you can just look at them. And then Vanessa, please feel free to share the links as well. Um, our website is uh, www.tayerbombalele.com. Facebook, we're Tayer Bombalele Bomba Dance and Dance Classes and Ensemble. Uh, Julia's page is Julia C. Cepeda. I'm Denise Solis. Um, what else? We're on Instagram, but we very rarely get on that because we're a little bit older and we're not really like, <laughs> I, I get confused with it. I, I barely can, I barely learned Facebook, so yeah. Gracias por acompañarnos en esta aventura. Les enviamos mucho amor. Eh, 
desde nuestros corazones, de verdad, muchas gracias, Vanessa, por siempre contar con Taller Bumbarele. De verdad, apreciamos muchísimo tu energía y el cariño de, de toda tu familia que le hemos estado sí. conociendo. Sí. Así que muchas gracias por hacernos parte de, de esta aventura. Ay, una, es, es un honor y un gusto para mí. Eh, todos pueden eh, escribirme si quieren más información sobre Bombalele o algo que se les haya quedado. Um, if anybody wants to write me, you guys have my email, vanessa.fernandez at stsu.edu. Um, yes, ha sido bien bonito. Everybody's writing such beautiful comments. Thank you all for coming you. and joining us and spending this beautiful time together. And hopefully we will all meet soon in person. Yes, we would love to do Bomba together as soon as this um, shelter and home gets lifted and hopefully everybody stays safe and healthy. And and, we'll yeah. Definitely bring you back to campus and then we'll have uh, maybe the 10 month old once he starts walking yeah, can yeah. start doing some Bomba too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, Perfect. thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Mucho thank amor. You. Cuídense. Oh. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. I'm still reading the. You're still reading the comments. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and okay. <laughs>